Okay, wonderful. Why did some of you have such a hard time last week understanding the 70th week of Daniel? Or the 70 weeks of Daniel 9, verse 24 to 27. Remember, it only speaks about three time frames in Bible prophecy. The first time frame, seven weeks. Second time frame, 62. Seven and 62 is 69. And the 70th week, one week, 70, 69 and 1, 70. In other words, according to the times of the Gentiles, God has ordained 49, 7, 434, 62, and the 70th week, one week, seven year, because it is three and a half years and three and a half years. So the total time from here to there, not taking the church out into account, and from there to there, added that period to this period, 490 years. That is what God ordained. Daniel 9, verse 24. They never knew, nobody said any word about the church age. That was a mystery. And that church age is where we are right now. And that has been going on in seven years from now. In the year 2030 will be 2,000 years. Which actually means that when the rapture takes place, let's say for instance, if the rapture would ever take place in 2030, and you count that seven years, then it will mean the total time from there, to there will be 2,490 years. You can do your own maths. All right? But everything that we have just said has to do with the times of the Gentiles. The interesting thing is the times of the Gentiles also span through the church age. So it's added to. But this part, from the cross to the rapture, from Jesus Christ died, the anointed one died, till the rapture, that period was kept a very close secret to the heart of God. So, when we look at Bible prophecy, then we understand all what was happening is because Israel wouldn't listen to God. God ordained in Daniel 7, Daniel 2, and Daniel 9, explaining in that chapters that there will be kingdoms of this world reigning over Israel, over the land of Israel, giving them a hard, hard time. Why? Because they would never listen to God. And because they don't listen to God, God would allow all these nations to trample Jerusalem and trample Israel under the feet. That's basically what it means, just in uh, layman's terms. All right. So let's turn to Daniel chapter 10. And before we read, I just want to make something very clear. Actually, from now, Daniel 10 to Daniel 12. There's only three chapters left. 10, 11, 12 is one vision. It's one encounter. It's one story. So the chapters, chapter 10, 11, 12, consecutively, it's just one piece of portion of Scripture. Remember, there was not chapters when the Bible was written. There was no chapters. When the Bible was written, there was no verses. All was one. It was a letter. Chapters and verses was only put in just over a thousand years ago. It never existed before then. So if anybody would read the book of Daniel many, many years ago, even 1,500 years ago, or uh, 2,000 years ago, or 2,200 years ago, it would be one scroll, continuously reading, reading, from beginning to end. For us, it's now easier to have chapters and verses because we can quickly refer to a portion of Scripture. But of course, it's good, but it's also bad. Bad in the sense of sometimes 
the chapter stops in the middle of a story. Or you feel the story is still continuing and now the chapter has broken the story. Uh, so so it's, it's good in the sense of we can very easily identify portions in Scripture. Can you imagine if you had a book like this and there was just Bible names of books but no chapters and no verses? How would you get to the portion? You don't know where you are. So it was, it was very hard for them. It was very difficult to have a scroll. That's why when you go like, like for instance, the scroll of Isaiah, if you would go now to a portion, like if I would choose one, I would say, let's go for instance to Luke chapter 4. If I say to you, go to Luke chapter 4 and, uh, and read there, and you will discover that Jesus was in his hometown Nazareth, in the synagogue, and they, told, and they gave Jesus a scroll to read. He was a visitor. Normally they would give a scroll to a visitor to read. Everybody would sit, and the visitor can speak a word of encouragement. So he can preach a message, and that's what Jesus did. But when they hand him the book roll, the scroll of Isaiah, the Bible says he deliberately, he looked for a very specific place in the scroll. And you can see, if you read in Luke, you will see he was going through the scroll until he reached a certain portion. Now we know from what is said in Luke 4, because it says what he read. We know exactly what it is in Isaiah. It's in Isaiah chapter 61. And it says, uh, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. has anointed me to preach the gospel. You know that story. And so, and then it says, To proclaim the good and acceptable year, a year of the Lord. And it says, And right there, Jesus closed. He gave the scroll back, and he never read the last portion, portion of that scripture. Because the last portion of that scripture speak about this period of time. Jesus, when he read, he stopped. And knowing what's going to happen, they're going to crucify him, he never went further. He only said, I'm here to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, not to come to judge. Because the second portion speak of the judgment of Israel. And he, Jesus refused to read it. So he was very clear on what portion of Scripture he would read. So I'm just explaining to you, when you look at the Scriptures and you understand how they would use the Scriptures, how they would read through the Bible. So when you come to a portion like Daniel chapter 10, remember... Daniel 10, 11, 12 is one vision. It's actually one storyline. But I'm going to only share with you chapter 10. So let's read together here. And uh, first verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. The message was true. But the point of time was long. And he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. The fact that the Bible says in the third year of Cyrus, we know it should be around about 533 before Christ. In other words, just 500 plus years before Jesus appeared. But what's interesting, what is actually shocking is what is Daniel doing there in Babylon? Why is he not back in Jerusalem? Because three years prior, the first word went out. The, the Jews that want to go back to Jerusalem, you can go back. Daniel never left. Daniel never went back. He stayed in Babylon. Under the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar, and the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians, Daniel never went back. Never. There's no verse in the Bible ever told you that Daniel went back to his homeland. Never went back. And the vision and the word spoken was true, but he foresee a difficult time, and he understood the struggle. It really, the vision that he saw, it touched him very deeply. 
So much so that the Bible says in verse 2 and 3, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. He was heartbroken. Because he knew that Israel is in trouble. I ate no pleasant food. No meat or wine came into my mouth. Nor did I anoint myself at all. Till three whole weeks were fulfilled. So Daniel fasted. He prayed. He understood partly the vision. But what he understood is. There's going to be a terrible time waiting for the Jews in the future. And so he did that no inclination or enjoyment to eat good food, to drink wine, or even anoint himself. Um, because to do that, it speaks of joy. Um, and, and he had no joy in his heart because he was very sorrowful of what he knew was coming. Then from verse 4 onward, now on the... 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of Ephas. His body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like burning uh, uh, burnished bronze in color and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. So he was really touched at this point in time by what he was seeing. And the vision was so great that Daniel fall down on the ground. And as he fall to the ground, I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision. But a great terror fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Now, we know where he was. He was at the banks of the, of the Tigris River. And it was also amazing that now we know where he was. He was in the Middle East. He was actually close to the Garden of Eden, where the Garden of Eden was. Because through the Garden of Eden, four rivers flow. The one was the Tigris, uh, the Gihon, um, the Euphrates, and also the Pishon. Those four rivers, all four of those rivers, flow through the Garden of, of Eden. And where these rivers pass through, Daniel was standing by one of them, and he saw this amazing, amazing appearance of this angel, Gabriel. We know that what he was seeing was an archangel, and his name was Gabriel. As we read further, we will understand. So Daniel, he was overwhelmed by what he was seeing, and he actually fell to the ground. And he said, therefore I was left alone when I saw the great vision, and no strength remained in me, for my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words, and while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, with my face to the ground. So the appearance of this heavenly visitor had a tremendous impact on Daniel. What is amazing is Daniel said in verse 11, and he said, because after he touched him, uh, he said to him, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you. So the angel was telling Daniel, you need to understand the words. Stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking his word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. 
and I have come because of your words. Now, it is really something very significant in the Bible that the angel said to him, that day when you, when you started to pray, when you humbled yourself, God heard your prayer on day one. So this we can clearly understand. But of course, there was a delay. Because the angel explained to him, and he said to him, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. So in other words, in the angelical world, in, in second heaven, because first heaven is what we call the atmospheric heaven around the earth, where we see the birds flying when you look up. The second heaven is where the fallen angels abode. And then the third heaven, the highest, is where God uh, has his throne. And that is in the utmost part of the universe, in the northern part, according to Isaiah chapter 14. And so Gabriel got a message from the Lord the first day, and the message that he received from the Lord, he had to take it immediately to Daniel. But Satan somehow knew what was going on. And so Satan and his angels withstood him, and he could not reach earth, which explains to us that many times when there's a delay in prayer, it's because there could be spiritual battles in the heavenlies that we know nothing of. And in this instance, he explained to Daniel, he said, the prince of the kingdom of Persia, it's a fallen angel, withstood me 21 days. I was in a fight. And behold, Michael, now we know who Michael is, he is the chief angel of the nation of Israel. He said, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, you see, other archangel, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. If you turn to Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, at that time Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stand watch over the sons of your people. So Gabriel explained later on to Daniel, that Michael, which I was telling you about, that he is the angel that has to take special care over the nation of Israel. God has angels over nations. God has archangels. We know that Gabriel has to do with salvation. You will always see when a Gabriel would appear in the New Testament, it's about to announce uh, to Mary and to Joseph about their son, Jesus Christ, that would be born and bring salvation to the world. And now, because he's explaining to him, God will save the Jewish people, but it's going to be a hard time for them. But eventually, God will come through. And so the angel, he explained to him, I had to call in Michael to come and help me. So you need to understand that there is a constant battle in the heavenlies. And let me tell you, in this day and age, that battle is intensifying right now. And there's a reason for that. Because remember, we are actually, because we're at the end of the church age, because we found ourselves here on God's prophetic timeline, we found ourselves here in the days before the rapture. Remember, if the rapture should take place now, what is going to happen with Satan and all his fallen angels in the heavenlies in the middle of the seven year? According to Revelation chapter 12, Satan, the dragon, the old devil, the snake of old, and all his angels will be cast out of the heavenlies on the earth, never to return again to the heavenlies. Which means, if the rapture would take place now, three and a half years from now, or a time and a time, or 1,260 days, or 42 months from now, Satan and all his angels will be cast down on this earth. Physically, they will be on the earth. 
They're going to be here. They're not going to be any other place in the universe because they will lose the battle. And guess, according to Daniel chapter 12, we will cast him and his angels down. Michael, the same one. The one that beat him once so that Gabriel could reach Daniel is going to beat him again. And this time, Satan and his angels will never be able to go back into the heavenlies ever again. So what we clearly see here, and that's, this is what he's explaining to him, I had to call in one of the chief princes, in other words, one of the greatest warriors of God in the spirit world. For me to reach you took me 21 days from heaven to earth. I would have been here long ago, but I was held up. I had to call in Michael. I needed help so I could reach you with a message. Now, my friend, you know, if you read Ephesians chapter 6, that our battle is against principalities and, and evil spirits and powers of the earth, uh, our powers in the air. You go and read Ephesians chapter 6, and you'll have a revelation what this is a spiritual battle all about. So sometimes we really found ourselves in a spiritual battle. So this is real. It's not only real then, it's going to be real very soon. In actual fact, it's going to be even more real when these um, angelical beings that has come to a fall, sinful angels, fallen angels, when they will all be cast down on the earth. So Michael, the ruler of Israel, he is the one that helped um, Gabriel. Of course, there was another instance in the book of Jude, where we read at the end of our Bible, where there was a dispute uh, with the devil about the body of Moses, and uh, Michael, he rebuked Satan. And he said, the Lord rebuke you. And it was a, 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 a discussion, and there were words, harsh words spoken about uh, Moses and, and the body of Moses. Why? Have you ever wondered why? Is it about how Moses died? The fact that the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 34, God buried Moses? But is it because it's about the resurrected body of Moses one day? Because remember, Michael is also the angel of resurrection. He's connected with the resurrection. Because in Daniel chapter 12, when Israel will be resurrected, the Old Testament saints, it talks about the archangel Michael. And what's interesting, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, when it speaks about the rapture, it talks about the voice of an archangel. Question is, could that be the voice of Michael? What's going on here? So what's very clear here is that Michael play a huge role and Gabriel play a huge role concerning heaven and earth and the fallen angels. But the one that is the big warrior, the strong warrior, is definitely Michael. Now in verse 14, now he explains to him, and he said to him, he said, Daniel, I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people. Who are that? Israel, the Jews. In the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. That was a problem that Daniel had in the first place. He knew that this is going to be a long, hard battle for years and years to come with the nation of Israel. So what he's explaining to him, and very clearly, he says, I want to tell you what is going to happen to your people. And what was Daniel's reaction? When he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face towards the ground and became speechless. I became speechless. And suddenly, one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me. And I have received no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord 
talk with you, my Lord. As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is any breath left in me. You must remember, this man is old. He's in his 80s. And this angel, with all his splendor, uh, now for many reasons, I mean, sometimes the angels will appear in all their splendor and people will fall down or when you see them, and other times they will hide some of their splendor, like you will never see that Mary fall down when she saw Gabriel. But here, um, appearing in his glory that is endued by the Lord, Daniel just, he couldn't face it. He says, how can I speak to you? There's no strength in me, no breath. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me, and strengthened me. And he said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not. Now, the, it's amazing that the angel from heaven tells Daniel, you are loved in heaven. You're a greatly beloved man. Heaven loves you. Greatly beloved. Fear not. Peace be to you. Be strong. Yes. Be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Daniel, first he was so terrified. Now he received some courage. And he said, Speak to me. And then he said, Do you know why I have come to you? Now? I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed, the prince of Greece will come. I'm going to fight with the fallen angel that's over the nation of Persia. And once he has lost the battle, what kingdom is coming? Greece. Can you see how in the angelical world, fighting battles in the heavenlies determine what happens with nations on the earth? It's battles playing out in the spirit world. And so he's clearly telling him, he says, I have to go and fight now with the prince of Persia. And once I've done that, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. Daniel, there's a book of truth in heaven. And I've read it. I know what is in that book. The book that God has in heaven. Because that's where the book is. I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. In other words, I read it. I know what's in that book. No one upholds me against this except Michael, your prince. You see? Michael, your prince of your people of the nation of Israel. Please, don't stop reading now. We can't stop. We have to go to verse 4 in the next chapter, 11. Because remember, there wasn't a chapter. All right? You have to keep on reading. Also, in the first year of Darius the Mede, I even, I stood up to confirm and strengthen him. So what he's saying is, the meat, when the Medans come, he said, I helped Darius, and Darius was good to the Jews. He said, I helped him. It's amazing, what did Darius know, the king of, of the Medes, what was going on in the heavenlies? He said, I fight these battles for him. He didn't even know it. He says, I mean, I'm fighting now with the Persians. He says, but once that is conquered, Greece will come. So he's talking about the fight with the Medes, the fight with the Persians, and the fight with the Grecian Empire, 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 how it will play out. He says, but now, I will tell you the truth, because the angel knows the truth. He read it in the book, in the book of the wars of the Lord in heaven. Behold, 
Three more kings will arise in Persia. He even know how many kings will come. And the fourth shall be far richer than them all by strength through his riches. He shall stir up all against the realm of the Greece of Greece. Then a mighty king shall arise who shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. And when he has arisen, the, his kingdom shall be broken up and divided towards the four winds of heaven, but not among his posterity, nor according to his dominion, which, with which he ruled, for his kingdom shall be uprooted, even for others beside these. So it's amazing that this messenger, this angel bringing him the message, he tells him of all the wars, and you must remember, these kingdoms, be it Babylon, be it the Medes, be it the Persians, be it the Greece, be it Romans, they all have something to do with the nation of Israel. And it brings always problems and trouble for them. But in the back of it all is God's angel, Michael. And he's fighting for Israel, for their survival. So in the backdrop that you can't see, what we do understand now very clearly from scriptures, by looking at the scriptures uh, at this very moment, we have a very clear understanding that there's a real battle in the angelical world. world. There's wars that will be fight, uh, that when the fight is on, that will be won and lost. And depending what happens in the heavenlies, things is going to play out on earth. It's amazing. Because at the end of the day, if that is true, then it means God that knows the future and knowing what's, what's happening in the, in, in the heavenlies and with the battle of the angels. So what you always will have is Satan will oppose the word of God, the prophecies of God. So he will try and block it. He will try and thwart the plans of God. He, he doesn't want it to come to pass. But I mean it's written in the book of truth, in the scripture of truth. It is written in heaven and it's going to happen. You can't stop prophecy. If God said it, God's going to do it. It's amazing. So in the context of what we've just um, found out here, Daniel was actually about to find out what is written in the book of truth. Because from now on, I mean, actually from verse 1 of chapter 11, Daniel here of different kingdoms coming after the other. And the fact that the angel talked to him about Greece. What did Daniel know living in this time? What did he know about Greece? Except when he explained to Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 2, when he explained the image he talked about Greece. When he had his own vision in Daniel chapter 7, of the Grecian Empire, when he saw the beast, the leopard, so with the wings of of of, um, of uh, eagles, so so all Daniel, I mean humanly, you can't see from here that one day the Roman Empire is going to take over the Grecian Empire. You can't, when you hear, you can't stand here and think Medo Persia, the Medes and the Persians going to take over this kingdom let alone standing here and see this kingdom. And Daniel did. When Daniel was here, he foresaw, he foresaw the two kingdoms of the Medes, the Medes and the Persians. And he talked about the Grecian Empire. And he lived right to the end here. Because they eventually came to a fall in 330 before Christ. And Daniel's word speaks till about uh, 333 before Christ. 533 before Christ. So what, what is... What is uh, what is very, very amazing for us, it seems to us, when we look at this, what we see today as kingdoms fighting with each other, and even here, when this revived Roman Empire is coming, what we are seeing here is actually battles in the angelical world that's playing out on earth. It's amazing. 
you will not believe it, but we've come to the end. Next week, we will investigate Daniel chapter 11. Thank you very much.